What up, nerds? It's Jason here from Custom Cannons, and I thought, as we've recently started doing this uh, DIY kit for doing a detachable cable mod on the DT770, 880, and 990, might as well do a video to show how to fit it, because I don't want anyone to, to, to mess it up in any way. And we're also going to fit the mass loading and damping kit and port adapters, so you can tune the t sound a little bit to your personal taste, improves the quality of the bass, that kind of thing. And then also, if you do a four pin conversion, uh, links in the WhatsApp. You've got the option of going balanced, so we can make your balanced cable or you can make your own balanced cable and then you'll be able to use your DT770, 880 and 990 with your balanced amp just to get that better channel separation and uh, essentially these, these these can be really good with a few cheap and easy mods. So anyway, um, if you want to join in at home we've got the links in the description to where you can buy the stuff from our shop or you can just source the parts. I'll try and put links to where you can get the parts yourself and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's do this thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah, before uh, before we get into it, let's just have a look at some of the other jobbies that we've got in the works. So the AKG balanced mod is now going through testing. Just nearly there. Should probably have it up on the website this week. We've got the 3D printed version and we're also getting an aluminium one, which you'll probably be able to pre-order. Again, I'll stick, I'll stick a link in that thing, but they won't be ready for another month or so because we've got to get them manufactured. But yeah, the 3D printed version should be a bit cheaper because uh, it's quite a complex part to get machined from aluminium. Also, quite exciting. I'm going to be making forged carbon parts for the Sennheiser HC25. We're just sorting out the design for the tooling at the moment and then we're hoping to make proper forged carbon parts where it's all like forged under high pressure and looks super sexy. But anyway, uh, enough about future projects, let's get on with this kit and the, the installation thereof. So let's start by dismantling the headphones. So first of all you're going to need a T6 screwdriver to undo the hinges. You only really need to undo one side. Undo the screw from that side slide this off the yoke he says failing that's it and then the other side should come away by itself just as is best practice I would obviously like you know if you're not in a hurry undo both sides um, but yeah, we only we only undo one screw because we're in a hurry got a lot of these to make so I'm just gonna pop the screw back in the hole so I don't lose it uh, unpop the headband that's pretty straightforward and then this would be the same process on the DT990 or the 880 or the 770. They're all basically the same uh, in their construction. So remove the headband and pad. Uh, remove the other ear cup. There we go. So we've got the business, business end apart. Remove the pads, obviously. Finger under there. Pull that off. Rinse and repeat. Inside here, there is a ring which is just clipped in, which holds this all together. I'm just going to use something blunt. A butter knife is good for this. I'm just using the handle of a scalpel that pops off to reveal the driver. Again, put these bits to one side. Okay, I'm just going to warm up my soldering iron. So, to do this mod, you're going to need a soldering iron, a glue gun. Uh, a multi-tool, Dremel type thing. And uh, it's always worth having a multimeter. Multimeter just lets you test for continuity and things like that. So if something goes wrong, it's always super handy to have one of these for testing. And you can pick up a cheap one for six or seven quid. It will pay for itself in no time at all. Um, just by making your life a bit easier. All right, so soldering iron's heating up. All right, so removing the drivers. We tap a tapper. That pops out. Pretty straightforward again. This is all all pretty easy stuff so far. And then this bit comes away from the driver pretty easily. Pop, pop those to one side because we're going to reinstall those later. Same on this side. And then this is the cable side, and you're going to notice that you've got a lot more wires in here. And just for your own peace of mind, I'd take a picture of this so you can clearly see where all the wires go because we get a lot of people who pull these things apart and then can't figure out what wires go where. And just a simple photo, even if you're never planning on reusing these wires, it's always just handy just to have that. Right, so to remove the original wires, what I'm going to do is you can see I've got a little bit of tension on the wire there, not too much, just a little bit. And then I'm going to touch the soldering iron that's already heated to each of those in turn, and you can see the wire just comes away. So that's the driver detached. And we're going to remove the other driver as well. Excellent. Uh, you'll notice on the latest drivers, uh, they've got a zero and one. 
on there. One is positive, zero is negative. And as you can see on this other driver, zero and one are the other way around. It's totally random as to which way round they are. Uh, so take note of that because if you get positive and negative confused when you solder it back together, um, it's going to sound weird. You're going to have to do a, a phase test. Before I forget, like and subscribe. Uh, I've, I've been checking out a stat. It turns out that subscribers to this channel are generally cooler by at least 20% than, than the general population. And I think you'll find that some of your suggestions down the side are just for normal people. And the only way to tell the algorithm that you're cool and you're into this kind of thing is to, is to hit subscribe, then it'll know, it'll make better suggestions. I'm not saying you have to watch our videos, but you know, it's just, it's just, it's just it's how the algorithm works. You have to let it know that you're cool, gives you better suggestions, click the subscribe. You know how it is, whoop, whoop. Next, we want to remove the original main cable. Now there's a clip in here, I don't know if you can see, the metal clip. Pull on that. That will release this cable. And then to get this other cable out, uh, the headband cable, they put these little brass crimp, crimp type things on there. And what I'd do is I'd get a small flat head screwdriver, poke it in there, and then you can loosen that up and then save these and we'll reuse them. Yeah, we'll reuse as much as we can. Right, so that's one. Pop that there for safekeeping. And you've also got the little rubber grommet that's on there. Pop that there. Let's remove that. And this one again. Just open that up with a screwdriver. Take that off. Remove that from it, slide that off and remove the original headband cable. In the kit that we send you out to do this job yourself at home, you'll receive a four pin socket with the wires already attached. So you've got a headband cable already on there. So it just, just saves a little bit of soldering and messing around. That ends a bit fiddly. Uh, so we're hoping that doing that makes it a bit easier. In there you will also get these little burr tools. You'll get a ball shaped one and a cylinder shaped one and we're gonna use that to embiggen the hole a bit and then before we get going there there is something of note here let's get rid of the original cable for a moment so if you have a look there you see you've got a rectangular hole and we may need to make that into a larger round hole and what we don't want to do is take any material off this side um, so, if that's our ear cup, this is our little rectangular hole. What we want to do is make the new hole there. So we're not going above this, we're not taking any material out in this section here. All the material we're taking out is towards the dome side, which is why we're using a burr tool rather than a drill bit. Because if you use a drill bit, it'll make that central, but we need to make it above. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the, uh, the ball shaped Dremel tool initially, and we're just going to start eating away at this bit, just gradually enlarging it. And then we'll use the cylindrical tool just to kind of get a nice flat uh, thing ready for that to plug into. Okay, so let's, uh, let's give that a pop. Alright, so now we have a hole in there. What I would do is, as you saw, I went pretty slowly and I'd hold on to this quite tightly because as you're taking it away it's going to try and wander off centre and just try and try and keep it vaguely central on there. I'm just breaking off any burr that's on there and we should be able to get this in. So the aim is, what we want to do, just feed the wires through the hole. So we want to get this to the point where that just nearly fits in so we can twist it and it will self tap a thread into the plastic. And in the kit you'll also get the actual um, plug and we'll use that, we'll hold that and we'll use that to tap in the thread. So next, so we've got a, a, a hole there, so I'm going to move to the cylindrical one. So at the moment our hole is slightly too small and I'm going to poke this in and just kind of manoeuvre it around like that just to enlarge the hole slightly and you just need to do it a little bit at a time until it's big enough. If you go too big, bad times. Uh, yeah, if you've got like a craft knife or, or something to hand you can 
to shave off the the burr that builds up there. All right, so how are we how are we looking now? Okay, so we're about we're about right on that. So basically, this won't won't go into the hole, but it will nearly. It should be big enough just to get that to thread in. Obviously, get it straight. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I can feel it biting in. Just making sure I've got it vaguely straight before I go. Okay. Now, so yes, yeah, so I'm using this plug as a tool. I'm just turning that. And what that's doing is basically using the metal threads of this, which are much harder than the plastic, to cut a thread into the plastic housing. So this is why it's important to go very slowly. Oh, phone. Ah, my beautiful wife. Right, um, yeah, so we're basically cutting a thread in there, and what that's going to do is give, give, give the socket a bit more support because it's actually screwed in. And ideally, what you want to do is keep turning until your button's on the outside. So now that socket is pretty much in there, which is good. That's what we want. Okay, so that's that threaded through there. Got your socket in. So yeah, as I was saying, sorry, I got interrupted by a phone call then. That's why it's important to go slowly. You don't want to have a hole that's too big and for this to be loose in there. You want it just slightly smaller than the thing. So the hole that, you, the reason why we send these is because these bits are just slightly smaller than the hole you need. So you start off with that and that should get you a big enough hole to put this one through and then you just use that one just to enlarge it ever so slightly by about like a half a millimetre or something. And then this will be, then it'll be big enough to tap this one, tap that in, and then that's pretty securely in there. But obviously we're going to add glue. Now then we use hot glue here. Um, you can use whatever glue you want, I suppose, an epoxy or something like that. The advantage of hot glue, if you've got it, is if something goes wrong, it's pretty easy to heat up again and remove the glue. Whereas if you've epoxied that in, that's, that's a pretty permanent thing. So while we have got it open, might as well pop this in. So this is the, the mass loading and damping kit. So for this you basically just cut out this ring here and this ring here and this rectangle and we'll stick those in. Uh, it's best to use a knife for this. Right, cool. So I have those pieces. Let's just remove the backing. These, will, these are quite sticky so they'll stick themselves in place. Especially on a hot summer's day like today. It's very sticky. So I'm just sticking that around that central little ring that you've got in there. Okay, that's there. And then we've also got this weight which goes on the back of the driver. It's got tape on the inside basically. You need to pull this red bit off. Uh, open that up ever so slightly. There we go. Just kind of push that on. So open that up, probably about a millimetre gap. So essentially it just adds a bit of weight to the back of the driver which increases the base response. Right, cool, so we've got the weights. Weights on both of those, got this, the glue gun should be hot now. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, put a big old blob of glue down there and you see this ridge? See the ridge going around the outside there? You don't want anything above that, so all the glue should be underneath that, otherwise the driver's not gonna go back in nicely. So I'm gonna start off by just doing some glue behind. Make sure, if you're using hot glue, make sure it's nice and hot so it flows nicely into all the gaps. Okay, so there, just let that cool for a minute. And next, what we want to do is get our the longer one, the headband cable. And first of all, pop the little brass duberdads on there. So I can embiggen that a bit. So one brass thing, cool. One grommet, pointy, pointy side up. Cool. All right, now, through the hole. Okay, 
what you want to do is give yourself enough room to kind of uh, run it around the edge there. And what you'll find is there, uh, yeah, start pushing the grommet in and then pull it through. And that will just click into place. And then slide your, your little brass thing up to the, the place where the cable is. As I said, want to give yourself enough cable to go around the outside like that. Just going to crimp that back down. And again, if you use it, if you've got hot glue to hand, I normally just stick a little bit just there, just to hold the cable down, just to stop it from flapping around inside. It's not totally necessary. Cool. All right, now we need to run this through into the other ear cup. It's just the reverse of that, so we're putting the grommet on pointy wet, pointy side down first, and then the and the brass crimping jobby. So you can get, pull the grommet through, get it clipped into place, at the same place. Give yourself enough room. So probably extend it a little bit past the edge of the ear cap there, just to give yourself enough length. Crimp that down. Cool, I'm just gonna pop the other the damping in the other side. So just remember when you're putting these in you want a small gap in between the two. So when we put this bit back in, it needs to go sort of poke down in between them. Which is why you cut out two separate rings rather than sticking one big big one in. Like this stuff's quite squidgy, so it'll squidge down, but just cutting it into two rings just makes sticking it back together at the end much easier. Uh, I nearly forgot on the other one. Uh, you also get this little rectangular bit, and that just goes anywhere around the circumference that you've got space. So uh, you see on the edge there, you've got like it's just just below the driver around the edge there and it can go anywhere you've got space and the idea is just that when you've got sound wave bouncing backwards and forwards in the ear cup it's going to soak up some of those and break them up a little bit right so the wires will be pre-tinned when you get them and we use red for positive and white for negative so if you have a look on your driver um, let's have a look. Look for the number one or the number two. Uh, number one or number zero. Uh, number one will be positive. So we want to put the red wire to the number one. Um, the way we've done it, it, it massively simplifies the wires. You've only got two wires going to each driver. Okay. So that's attached to the number one. This is attached to the zero. You won't need any extra solder on there, I wouldn't have thought. You can just, because uh, they're pre-tinned, they should just join straight on. That's it. And what we're doing is uh, we're soldering to the outer pads, the, the large pads on the outside. Um, that's probably where you want to attach the wires. So that's that's attached on there. Then we can pop this bit back. You'll notice on here you've got a cutout section. That goes over there on the on the right hand one and then on the driver you've got a little key a little notch there and you've got a little hole in the ear cap so make sure you line those up so it goes in nicely now then on this side we're going to have to modify this ever so slightly to make room for our socket so what we want to do is just cut cut this bridge out here so you can see where you've got the gap just make a cut here cut here to cut that bit out there we go pop that back on this on the back of your driver and when we pop this back in just try and make sure the wires are out of the way there we go and then you can pop your phone bit back on and your retaining ring As I said, the, the bitumen inside is quite squishy, but sometimes you're going to have to press down sort of quite hard on this just to get it all to squish into place. 
that's all nicely solidly in there. Right, so that's the that's the actual headphones. We now have a socket in there. Next, we're going to convert the cable. Oh yeah, if you buy our, if you do get the mass loading and damping kit, which are fitted to these, you get also get these little port adapters. These are just little circles with different size holes in. Um, okay, uh, on the DT770 on the side, you've got a little hole with a little tiny bit of mesh in. I don't know if you can see. And if you pop that over the top, that will reduce the size of that hole, which brings your bass down a little bit. So you can use these to tune the sound. So the smaller the hole, the less bass you get, and more treble. OK, so next we're going to convert the cable. What we're going to want to do is chop the end off the cable initially. We've got a pair of snipper tips. So if you've got one with a straight cable and you want a shorter cable, you can just shorten it at this point, just cut it down to the length that you want, that distance from the jack. Now we need to strip this back a little bit, probably 15 mil. That will reveal the, the wires internally. As I said, Kevlar, it's not easy to cut. <laughs> Alright, so you've got three wires in there, in this one. Uh, black, white, and red. I'm pretty certain black is ground, but we're going to test it with a multimeter just to make sure. We're stripping off these. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin, tin the ends. Yeah, so I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to the ends of these bits of wire. Making sure all the strands have got a bit of solder soaked up into them. Okay, so we've got a bit of solder on the end. Now I'm going to use my multimeter and set it to continuity, which means it will go beep if there's a connection. So make sure it's going beep. And then we can use that to test which is which. So this the sleeve bit here is negative, and I'm assuming that's the black. It's always worth checking. Yep. And then this is right, and this is left. So it goes right, left, ground. So now we know the black one is the negative, this one's left, and this one's right. The red is right. But it might be like bear dynamic change the cables all the time, so it might be different on yours. It's always worth always worth checking. And we've got the the actual socket itself. Just unscrew that. And first of all you're gonna to want to put this bit on. So if you solder it all on and you've forgotten that, you can have a bad time. Um, until I don't normally do this at someone else. And poke the middle bit out. Uh, there's a little plastic. Take note of which way around this goes. There's a little plastic bit there. Um, what is it? Teflon, I think it is. Slide that over. So it is pin one, two, three, and four. Pins two and four, these ones above each other, are both going to be connected to the ground. So what we want to do is try and solder it on so that our ground wire is touching both of those. Um, so what I would do is I'd probably, where you've tinned it, I'd bend that upwards and then you can make it touch touch both. So they've got all the numbers marked. It's got all the numbers marked on there if you're not sure. And we use pin one as left positive. Now normally if I was doing this up in the workshop I'd use some helping hands to hold this all together, but I'm trying to do this with minimum minimum tools. Okay. So now those wires are all attached on there. Give them a good Bit of a tug, make sure that ground wires are attached to both. But yeah, it's always worth giving it a bit of a little yank just to make sure that they're properly on there. Uh, next, we need to slide up this little plastic bit to cover it all up. Then this slides up and it's got a key which goes over the plastic bit so that only goes one way around. And you want to crimp down the, the ends. And then slide this piece on. Slide that up. Oh, we're pretty much there now. So now we have the cable. Ba -cha -ba -cha. Ba -ba -ba -cha. Oh, 
Oh, so how sexy is that? Then we just have to pretty much do the reverse of what we did before and pop it back together. And when you put the headband back on, you want the top of the poppers at the front. And try and get this cable vaguely even. Make sure you're going for them to extend the arms. And there we go. A detachable cable. And if you want to get real fancy, uh, because of the way we've wired it, you could then add a balance cable. So if you've got something with like a 4-pin XLR or a 4.4, these sockets are set up now so that you can take a balanced cable as well. So there we go. So you could potentially have a balanced detachable cable using that kit. So anyway, thanks for watching it till the end. And as a little bonus for you guys who stuck around. Uh, did you fancy one of these for free? What? what? Uh, yeah, if you uh, tell me why you deserve one in the in the comments below and this first week after the video we'll, we'll give away let's say up to five socket kits and mass loading and damping kits so uh, yeah, stick your details in there tell me why you deserve it if there's more than five of you on there I'll I'll pick them at random we'll stick some names in the hat oh, it'd be fun you know and then you can let me know how it goes you can comment on the video say how the how the installation went say if you had any problems it'd be really uh, interesting to get your feedback but uh, anyway it's been super awesome hanging out I better go like and subscribe you, you know you know how it is do the do, do, call to action call to action like and subscribe you want the algorithm to know that you're cool, don't you? It's goddamn Laurie outside. God damn it. <laughs>